As promised, let's take you live to Alice Springs now. We saw yesterday Darren Clark meeting with the opposition leader, Peter Dutton, and Peter Dutton now says the AFP need to be called in. Business owner Darren Clark joins us live now. Thanks so much, Darren. Appreciate it. Uh, good to see you. Once again, I mean, I mentioned in January the media spotlight was on Alice Springs. There was a call to action then. Um, various people said they were going to do something about it. Here we are all these months later. We've spoken in the intervening time and things really haven't improved in Alice Springs, have they? No, unfortunately, Laura, they haven't. Um, <coughs> we've had a, one of the worst weekends that we've had over Easter. Um, multiple stolen cars um, being driven dangerously through the CBD. Uh, they've been loaded... Backs of Hilux has been loaded with rocks. Um, they've been thrown at people that are on the streets. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite amazing what's going on, um, and nothing's been done about it. Um, it's, it's really sad, Laura. It's just so sad. So Peter Dutton wanted to meet with you yesterday, and he did. Um, I think you have conveyed the desperation um, and what you need there but the solutions aren't as easy to come by. It's starting with a call for the AFP to be an Alice. Is that what you need? Well, we definitely need something. Um, look, Laura, we've got a lot of children that are on the streets, and that's what everyone's forgetting about. And that's, you know, at times I get called a racist or, or something like that or far right. I'm, I'm far from that. My, my main priority here is for these children to be safe off the streets and in turn that will make the, the streets safer for the whole community and the whole community functions better. Now, if it takes the uh, Defence Force to come in, uh, which which it may take because our, our, our police force is undermanned, uh, under-resourced, and they're really struggling and it's a very big job and, and look, our town's very spread out. So I, I don't see any other way of doing it. But then, Laura, we need we need somewhere to put those children, you know, where they're safe. There's a reason why they're on the streets. You know, they haven't got a safe home. Um, and a lot of people will find it hard to believe. I feel sorry for these kids, you know. They're doing the wrong thing and no-one condones that behaviour. But there's a reason why they're doing this. There's a reason why they're on the streets and why they're playing up. You know, whether it's to get attention or to get some help for themselves. Um, I don't know exactly how how they how they're doing it or, or what their what their means to, what they want at the end of the day. But the system has failed them, and the whole system's failing our, our town. Um, and it's just right across the Northern Territory now, and it's mm. it's places like Poundville as well, and and in uh, Halls Creek and places like that in WA. Mm. So we've got a serious problem in Northern Australia, not just Dallas Springs. I, I'm I'm the advocate for my town. Um, but you see it widespread across Northern Australia. Now there's got to be there's got to be some action taken because these children, at sooner or later, they're gonna they're gonna roll one of these cars in the, in the CBD, or they're gonna hit someone with a rock, or they're gonna play into a crowd of people. Now that's the last thing that anyone in this town wants because it's it's a dangerous place. We can't even drive through an intersection uh, without you have to check up at night or early in the morning without having to check even at a green light, that there's nothing coming the other way, a stolen car. Like, mm. we, we can't live like this, and these children can't continue to live like this because it's going to end in tears, and it'll, it'll be a na national tragedy when it happens. We've lost a life here 18 months ago. They've just lost a life up in Darwin for other reasons, like with the violence. Um, so something needs to happen, and it ha it's, it's urgent. It's urgent. And I don't care what political persuasion you are, Mm. You know, if it's Peter Dutton, it's Adam Bant, you know, if it's Lydia Thorpe, if it's Albanese, I don't care. Yeah. If, if you want to come here and talk to the people and get an insight of what's going on and get us some help, that's all we want. Now, if Peter Dutton can go away with Jacinta and do bipartisan, you know, this is bigger than politics. Take the agendas out of it. I'm not standing up with Peter Dutton to stand up for the voice. That, that's a referendum. That'll take care of itself. I have no, I have no allegiance on either side of that. I want my town to be safe, Laura. Yeah. And I think that's every Australian's right.
I was going to ask you about that, and you, you addressed it because, you know, it would be easy for your detractors, if there are any, uh, to say, oh, look, he's political, he stood up uh, next to Peter Dutton. But I know that that's not the case. You, you'll stand up with anyone who goes to, to Alice Springs uh, and try and speak to a national media about this. I know you've called for Anthony Alba Albanese to head up to Alice Springs uh, once again. Uh, Natasha Files, you've been quite critical of. But is this political or is this just... You don't care who gets it done, gets it, it fixed. You just want it fixed. I want it fixed. Now the leader of the opposition here of the Northern Territory left, not me. All right, I'm one of her biggest critics in the Northern Territory. Yeah. So if you want to call me politically aligned, I talk and I message Marion Scrimgeour, our Indigenous Federal Minister here, mm. uh, member here. I talk to her a lot. I, I fill her in what's going on. I talk to our Indigenous councillor, Michael Little. I'm just trying to get some help. They're very concerned. Now, if you see all their videos that we posted over Easter, yeah. now, all those, all those videos were sent to me by Indigenous people. They've had, a, they've had enough too, Laura. They've had enough too. This is not a racial problem. This is not a political problem. There is no agendas here. It's just, let's get this place safe. Let's get these children looked after because there's a lot of issues here and the remote communities, let's get them some jobs on our remote communities, let's get them the health services, mm. let's get them homes. Things have got to change, Laura. 95% of people in the Northern Territory on remote communities haven't even got TV reception and you want them to live out there? Like, they can't even sit down and watch Friday Night Footy, mate. Like, that, well, this is 2023. So if anyone wants to call me a racist or say I'm politically aligned, I'm not. I know the whole picture. I'm well across it all. Mm. And I just want this place to be safe. And I want these kids, they need some help. Because we've, we're going to lose generation after generation here, Laura. And, and, and in turn, the trouble never stops. It won't stop. I, I keep saying it. The cycle will just keep continuing. Yep. It needs urgent help. We can't wait for generational change, like I said yesterday. We just can't wait for that. You can, you can do that in the background. But we need some urgent help here, Laura, because there's going to be loss of life or lives, whether it's innocent victims or whether it's these, these kids in, in stolen vehicles, and they're mostly government stolen vehicles because they're getting them out of government buildings. Wow. They're breaking into nursing homes and getting keys and then stealing cars out of nursing homes. We've got a serious problem. We just want some help. That's all we want. I don't care if it's Albo or Adaban, like I said. I don't care. If Peter Dutton wants us to walk the streets of Alice Springs and talk to the people and get the real story, I take my hat off to him. I really do. And, I, and he's, he's earned the respect. Um, it was quite an emotional meeting I had with him yes, yesterday, Laura. I was, that's why I, I broke down probably on, on the TV screens, um, because th this stuff really does get to you. Um, I, I get fed a lot of stories from mothers, um, from and it just breaks your heart. It breaks your heart to what's going on. What it, it's so sad. It's I, I I get lost for words sometimes because you, you just can't you can't put it into words. I wish I could show you these private stories that people trust me with. Yeah. Because it, 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 it's horrid. It, it's really horrid, and it, it cuts deep. It cuts so deep in our community, um, and, and we just need some help. There's a lot a lot of pro complex issues here. Mm. I know no one's got all the answers and I don't expect them to. But we, we, we've cried, cried out for a circuit breaker. We urgently need that because someone's going to die. And I, I hate to say it, but Laura, it's 2023. These kids should be looked after. They should be in a loving home. They should be safe. They should have a meal on their table every night. They should be able to sleep in a safe bed. They should be able to get up, have breakfast, get dressed in clean clothes and go to school and get an education. Currently, those kids cannot do that. Yeah. When you're on the street every night, how do you rock up to school and get an education? You can't do that. And there's plenty of friends of mine here that are Indigenous and they've, they've, they've been come from great families, great parenting, a great foundation, and they're achievers mm. because they got that care and love early in their lives. 
and they've kicked on with it. it it's just, it's just the key. But at this point in time, we just need some safety. That's all we need. And I'm not saying that Alice Springs is the only place in Australia that needs this, mm. but this is my town. This is the one I'm batting for. I was in Melbourne on the weekend. I ran into some guys from Townsville. Like, what they're going through up there, it, it's out of control. Yeah. I spent the guy, a weekend with a guy that lives in Halls Creek now up there. It, it is out of control too. Mm. But I can't fight all them battles. I'm fighting a battle here for, for this town. Um, it takes us, it seriously takes its toll on you. Um, and I've read some social media comments this morning that I'm funded by the LNP. Well, I tell you not, I'm not funded by the LNP. Mm. I'm not a member of a political party. Um, at the moment here, our, our country Liberal Party, I'm, I've been appalled with their leadership and how and what they've done because we, we don't see enough of them down here from Darwin to help us. Yeah. So what? It's bigger than politics. It's so much bigger than politics and, and and it's bigger than agendas. Like I say, people will people will put me in the anti-voice campaign and, oh, here he is, uh, he's backing them up and he's going to tell this story to, to mm. get everyone to vote. No, that's, that's not my agenda. I want to make that quite clear. I want to make that quite clear. As I said, Alice Springs is my focus. There is a referendum. Mm. That'll take care of it, Bill. So it'd be great. It'd be great if Peter goes away, and just you know, it'd be great if Albo opens his door up mm. and he has a sit down with them, and they have an honest, honest, open discussion on this issue, because we can't wait any longer. We can't wait for things to be built or anything like that. We need urgent attention now. Whether that's the ADF, that's not my call. But we need some help because our police can't police this. Our policies here that are in place and our laws that are in place won't allow them to police this. Like we had stolen cars racing through the other night, Thursday night, and there's barriers in the middle of it. We've got some roadworks and they had the spikes ready to spike the cars. Yeah. But the kids are running across and pushing the barriers. So then it diverts the car away from the spike zone. But the police can't do anything about that. So it's outrageous what goes on here. And these poor little buggers, one of them's going to die. One of them's going to die, and, and that's what we... None of us want that here in Alice Springs. Yes, there's a lot of angry guys here. All along my street here and where my business is the other night, Saturday night, guys were actually camped in their, in their businesses. They're camped in their businesses. But what I will say, Laura, I'm so, so proud of some of the boys in this town. Now, the Territory boys are pretty rough and tumble. But they've held back. There's no vigilante stuff going on. I do not condone that under any circumstances, and these boys know that. But I'm so, so proud that the boys of this town haven't done anything silly. They'll guard their businesses, they'll protect other businesses, but they won't do it with violence, and that's the important thing. So we're a strong community, we're keeping together, but we're running out of patience, mate. Well, mate, you keep on wearing your heart on your sleeve. I don't think you've ever been lost for words, certainly not on this uh, program since I've known you. So, again, we thank you for talking to us. We'll keep on having the conversation. Uh, let's hope we're talking about something good one day. Darren, thanks so much. Good on you, Laura. Thank you, mate. Bye-bye.